Hello everyone, this is a small guide on body language about arms. So let's get into it. Arm barrier signals. Hiding behind a barrier or hiding behind a barrier is a normal response we learn at an early age to protect ourselves. As children, we hid behind solid objects such as tables, chairs, furniture, and mother's skirt whenever we found ourselves in a threatening situation. As we grew older, this hiding became more sophisticated, and by the age of six, when it was unacceptable behavior to hide behind solid objects, we learned to fold our arms tightly across our chests whenever a threatening situation arose. During our teens, we learned to make the crossed arms gesture less obvious by relaxing our arms a little and combining the gesture with crossed legs. As we grow older, the arm crossing gesture can evolve to the point where we try to make it even less obvious to others. By folding one or both arms across the chest, a barrier is formed that is unconscious attempt to block out what we perceive threat or undesirable circumstances. The arms fold neatly across the heart and the lungs regions to protect these vital organs from being injured. So it's likely that arm crossing is inborn. Monkeys and chimps also do it to protect themselves from a, from a frontal attack. One thing's certain, when a person has a nervous, negative or defensive attitude, it's very likely he will fold his arms firmly on his chest, showing that he feels threatened. Why crossed arms can be detrimental Research conducted in the United States into the crossed arms gesture has shown some worrying results. A group of volunteers were asked to attend a series of lec lectures and each student was instructed to keep his legs uncrossed, arms unfolded, and to take a casual, relaxed sitting position. At the end of the lectures, each student was tested on his retention and knowledge of the subject matter and his attitude toward, towards the lecturer was recorded, recorded. A second group of volunteers was put through the same process, but these volunteers were instructed to keep their arms tightly folded across the chest throughout the lectures. The results showed that the group with the folded arms had learned and retained 38% less than the group who kept its arms unfolded. The second group also had a more critical opinion of the lectures and of the lecturer. When you fold your arms, your credibility dramatically reduces. These tests reveal that when a listener folds his arms, not only does he have more negative thoughts about the speaker, but he's also paying less attention to what's being said. It's for this reason that training centers should have chairs with arms to allow the attendees to leave their arms uncrossed. Some people claim that they habitually cross their arms because it feels comfortable. Any gesture will feel comfortable when you have the corresponding attitude. That is, if you have a negative, defensive, or nervous attitude, folded arms will feel comfortable. If you're having fun with your friends, folded arms will feel wrong. Remember, remember that with all body language, the meaning of the message is also in the receiver as well as the sender. You may feel comfortable with your arms crossed and your back stiffened and your back and your neck stiffened. But studies have shown that others' reactions to these gestures is negative. So the lesson here is clear. Avoid crossing your arms under any circumstances unless your intention is to show others you don't agree or don't want to participate. You may feel arm crossing is simply comfortable, but others will think you're not approachable. Crossed arms on chest. Both arms are folded together across the chest as an attempt to put a barrier between the person and someone or something they don't like. There are many arm folding positions and we will discuss them here.
The most common ones you're likely to see is crossed arms on chest. This crossed arms on chest is universal and is decoded with the same defensive or negative meaning almost everywhere. It is commonly seen among strangers in public meetings, in queues or cafeteria lines, ele elevators or anywhere that people fear uncertain or insecure. Story. There was a meeting in the local council where a debate was held on cutting down the trees by developers. The developers sat to one side of the room and to their opponents, the greenies, sat on the other. About half of those attending sat with their arms crossed at the opening of the meeting and this increased to 90% of the greenies when the developers addressed the audience. And almost 100% of the developers did it when the greenies spoke. This shows how most people will take an arms folded position when they disagree with what they're hearing. Many speakers fail to communicate their message to their audience because they haven't seen the arms crossed position of their listeners. Experienced speakers know that this gesture means a good icebreaker is needed to move their audience into a more receptive position that will change their attitude from negative to positive. When you see someone take the arms crossed position, it's reasonable to assume that you may have said something with which they disagree. It may be pointless continuing their your line of argument even though the person could be verbally agreeing with you. The fact is that body language is more honest than words. As long as someone holds an arms folded position, a negative attitude will persist. Your objective should be to try to work out why they cross their arms and try to work out how to move the person into a more positive position. The attitude causes the gesture to occur and maintaining the gesture forces the attitude to remain. So what's the solution? A simple but effective way of breaking the arms for their position is to give the listeners something to hold or give them something to do. Giving them a pen, book, brochure, sample written, written test force <coughs> forces them to unfold their arms and lean forward. This moves them into a more open position and therefore a more open attitude. Asking someone to lean forward to look at a visual presentation can also be effective means of opening the arms folded position. You could also lean forward with your palms up and say, I, see, I can see you have a question. What would you like to know? Or, what's your opinion? You then sit down or lean back and indicate that it's their turn to speak. By using your palms, you non-verbally tell them that you would like to be open and honest because that's what you're being. More often than not, buyers have hidden objections that most salespeople never discover because they miss seeing the buyer's arm folded cluster, signaling that he was feeling negative about something. Reinforced arm crossing. If a person has clenched fists as well as a full arm cross, this cluster called false fist clust fuck fist clenched arm crossed shows hostility as well as defensiveness. If it's combined with a tight lipped smile or clenched teeth and a red face, a verbal or even a physical attack could happen. A, a approach is needed to discover what is causing it if the reason is not already apparent. Thus, this person has an aggressive atti attacking attitude. Fist clenched arms crossed shows a hostile attitude exists. Arm gripping. The double arm grip is characterized by the person's hands tightly gripping their upper arms to reinforce themselves and avoid exposure of the front of the body. Sometimes the arms can be gripped so tight that the fingers and knuckles can turn white. 
as blood circulation is cut off. It's a person's way of comforting himself with a form of self-hugging. Arm gripping is commonly seen in doctors and dentists waiting line or with first time air travelers who are waiting for liftoff. It shows a negative restrained attitude. The double arm grip. Feeling insecure about buying and not buying what you're selling. In a courtroom, the claimant may be seen using a fist clenched arm crossed pose while the defendant may have taken the double arm grip position. After shaking hands with the boss, the new employees may take full or partial arm crossing positions because of their apprehension about being in the presence of the company's top person. Both the general manager and the new employees feel comfortable with their respective gesture clusters as each is signaling his status relative to the other. But what happens when a general manager meets a young up and coming male who is also a superior type and who may even signal that he is as important as the general manager. The likely outcome is that after the two give each other a dominant handshake, the younger executive may take an arm fold gesture with both thumbs pointing upwards. This gesture has the arms crossed plus both thumbs up showing that he's feeling cool and in control. As he talks, he gestures with his thumbs to emphasize points he is making. As we've already discussed, the thumbs up gesture is a good way of showing others that we have self-confident attitude and the folded arms still give a feeling of protection. Someone who is feeling defensive but also submissive at the same time will sit in a symmetrical position which means one side of their body is a perfect, perfect mirror of the other. They display tense muscle tone and as if they expect to be attacked. Whereas a person who is feeling defensive and dominant will take an asymmetrical pose. That is, one side of the body doesn't mirror the other. Getting the thumbs up. When you're presenting your case to someone and the thumbs up arms crossed appears toward the end of your presentation and is clustered with other positive gestures, it signals you can move comfortably into asking the person for a commitment. On the other hand, if at the close of the presentation, the other person takes a fists clenched arms crossed position and has a poker face, you can be inviting trouble by attempting to get a yes. It would be better to ask questions to try to uncover the person's objections. When someone says no to a proposal, it can become difficult to change their mind without looking as if you're aggressive. The ability to read body language allows you to see a negative decision before it is verbalized and gives you time to take an alternative course of action. When you can see a no before it's said, you can try a different approach. People carrying weapons or wearing armor seldom use arm gestures because their weapon or armor provides sufficient body protection. Police officers who wear guns, for example, rarely cross their arms unless they're standing guard and they normally use the fist clenched position to communicate clearly that nobody is permitted to pass where they are standing. Hugging yourself. When we were children, our parents or carers embraced or hugged us when we faced distressing or tense circumstances. As adults, we often attempt to recreate those same comforting feelings when we find ourselves in stressful situations. Rather than take a full arm cross gesture, which can tell everyone we are fearful, women often substitute a subtler version, a partial arm cross, where one arm swings across the body to hold or touch the other arm to fold the barrier and it looks as if she is hugging herself. Partial arm barriers are often seen in meetings where a person may be a stranger to the group or is lacking self-confidence. Any person, any woman taking this position in a tense situation will usually claim that she's just being comfortable. 
Men use a partial arm barrier known as holding hands with yourself. It's commonly used by men who stand in front of a crowd to receive a reward or give and a speech. Also known as the broken zipper position, it makes men feel secure because he can protect his crown jewels and can avoid the consequences of receiving a nasty frontal blow. How the rich and famous reveal their insecurity. When people who are continually exposed to others, such as royalty, politicians, television personalities, and movie stars, usually don't want their audiences to detect that they are nervous or unsure of themselves. They prefer to protect a cool, calm, controlled attitude when on display, but their anxiety or apprehension leaks out in disguised forms of arms crossing. As in all arms cross gestures, one arm swings across the in front of the body towards the other arm, but in front <clears throat> but instead of the arms crossing, one hand touches or holds onto a handbag, bracelet, watch, shirt cuff or object on the or near or their other arm. Once again, the barrier is formed and the secure feeling is achieved. Men wearing cufflinks are often seen adjusting them as they cross a room or dance floor where they are in few, full view of others. The cufflink adjust is a trademark of Prince Charles who uses it to give himself a feeling of security any times he walks across an open space in full view of everyone. Women's use of disguised arm barriers is less noticeable than men's because women can grasp onto things like handbags or purses if they become self-conscious or unsure of themselves. One of the most common versions of creating a subtle barrier is to hold a glass or cup with two hands. You only need one hand to hold a glass, but two hands allows the insecure person to form an almost unnoticeable arm barrier. These types of gestures are used by almost everyone and few of us are aware that we're doing them. The coffee cup barrier. Offering a refreshment during a negotiation is an excellent strategy for gouging how the other person is receiving your offer. Where a person places their cup immediately after they take a drink is a strong indicator of whether they are or not convinced or open to what you're saying. Someone who is feeling hesitant, unsure, or negative about what they're hearing will place their cup to the opposite side of, the, of, their, of their body to form a single arm barrier. When they are accepting of what they are hearing, they place the cup to the side of their body, showing an open or accepting attitude. Sitting with your elbows on the armrest of the chair is a position of power and conveys a strong upright image. Humble individuals, humble defeated individuals, let the arms drop inside the arm of the chair. So avoid this at all times, unless your goal is to appear defeated. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.